You've probably seen these ads. Learn to code in 12 weeks, become a developer, no experience needed. And while it's true that tech skills can open doors, there's a lot more to the story. Today, we're going to break down the top myths about learning tech skills that no one really shares. This is coming from someone who completely did a 180, switched from fashion modeling into tech. And I remember these myths and still to this day, I hear them so often. So I thought, it's time we break them down. First up, let's start with some data. The Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that tech jobs will grow 15% between 2021 and 2031. That's much faster than the average job. And the median salary for these tech roles, around 100,000 per year. So you can see there is still a lot of opportunity in these areas. Let's jump right into these myths. Myth number one, you need to learn the hottest new programming language. Here is what Silicon Valley, or anyone really, won't tell you. According to Stack Overflow's 2023 developer survey, the most commonly used programming language are actually the older, more established ones. For example, JavaScript has been around since 1995, Python since 1991, and they're still the most in-demand languages. Why is this? Because companies need maintainable, reliable code more than they often need cutting edge technology. I found this study really interesting. It's a study by Redmonk and it confirms this. The most popular languages have remained relatively stable for the past decade. So there's no need to rush out and learn the latest and greatest technology or programming language every time it comes around. Stick to the data, learn the classics. That is, if you're interested in being a developer. We'll dive into other myths that relate to other roles after this. Myth number two, you need a computer science degree. So many people seem to still think this today and I wanna share something interesting with you on that. Going back to Stack Overflow's survey, they found that about 65% of developers have learned things such as coding, project management, etc., all through self-study. And according actually to HackerRank's developer skills report, 87% of hiring managers consider skills certifications and project portfolios as valuable as degrees, which I totally agree with. I remember when I would interview, especially developers at the time, but even interviewing different project managers, I often would focus on what have they done? What are their actual skills versus what is on a piece of paper? And I think that is something that is so exciting about being in tech is you don't need to have a specific degree or certification. I mean, granted, unless you're getting into something very specialized, but there's a lot of flexibility and opportunity for you to network and build your skills based on actual projects. And this doesn't just refer to developers, this is for anyone really. Okay, let's jump into myth number three. You can become a professional, insert anything, in just a few months. We've seen the, the the what is it headlines we've seen the news become a data scientist become a developer in in less than three months and honestly i can tell you as someone who initially fell for those headlines and thought this is great that's not the case it's a lot of hard work that needs to go into it so set your expectations realistic it takes time you might have to start with an internship you might have to work your way up to something a bit more, maybe you wanna work at a startup, but it's not just gonna be an overnight success, especially in today's industry. And that brings us to myth number four. You need to be great at math to work in tech. This is a big one that keeps away many people from tech careers. And I know for me, I thought for being a developer that I wasn't able to do it for the longest time because I wasn't this genius at math. But listen to this. According to a 2023 study from Glassdoor, only 25% of tech job postings require actual advanced math skills. I mean, things such as UX designers, project managers, data analysts, and many other tech professionals use basic math at most. But what matters more? According to the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report, which I love, by the way, I think it does a really good uh, job studying and researching, the most valuable skills in tech are actual, actually problem solving, critical thinking, and communication. In fact, a study by Google's Project Oxygen found that among the top eight skills of successful employees, technical expertise came in last behind soft skills, things like coaching and communication. This is because technical skills can be learned. No one starts there, even if you're further along in your career as a technical person, this is because even when you start at a new company, you often have to learn new tech skills as well. Things are constantly changing. So if you are someone though that has these soft skills, these things that are harder, if you will, to teach someone, can easily pick up technical skills. I remember when I was interviewing, at the time it was for IBM, it was for a software developer role, and the interviewer who had become my, my senior manager at the time said, 
you know, Tiff, we're gonna hire you because you have great communication skills. We can tell you're really hungry to learn and you're really eager. Your technical skills, they're not really where they should be yet, but we're gonna get you there because that that's easy. That's the easy part. And that really stood out to me. And I really want you to keep that in mind. Even if you are in more senior working in tech currently or midway in your career, you can still switch. There's no, there's no one linear path. And even if you're a developer and you wanna get into data science or vice versa, it doesn't mean that you have to start from ground one or step one, if you will. You have a lot of experience to offer, more than you realize. And those soft skills, showing that you can communicate and you're a team player, they will get you further than you realize. Myth number five is a big one. I still get asked this question a lot, which is tech is only for young people who just started their careers. And I think this comes from Silicon Valley's obsession with youth, and it might make you think that tech is a young person's game. But here is another study from Hackeray. They found that developers and other individuals were 30, who were over 35 were actually more likely to be in senior leadership positions. And you might be, well, yeah, because they've been in it for a while, but that's not always the case. 83% of tech companies report that age diverse teams are more productive. And I think that is so true and something we really need to be aware of. It's, it's the stereotype that we build up so much in our own heads, especially that we need to be young to get into tech or to switch roles if you're working in tech currently, where the case is not that. I think a lot of people who are proper business people, if you will, will find it admirable if you are someone who's switching into a different role or learning a new tech skill at a later stage in life. And when I say later, I'm just talking about not in your early 20s, let's be clear here. It's not later, later in your life, uh, like 80 or whatnot, but I mean, good for you if that's the case too. Myth number six is once you learn to code or any other technical skill, you'll spend all day writing code. I cannot tell you how much People used to tell me that, Tiff, when you, if you get into a coding role or a technical role, that's all you're gonna do. You're never going to speak to people. And I thought, that is insane. What are you talking about? Like, there's collaboration, there's meetings. Do we get, need to discuss project requirements? Don't listen to those people because on average, I would say you spend about 50 to 60% of your time doing, if you're in a technical role, actually doing that technical part of the project, depending on how further along you are in your career. As you progress in your career, the less, the reality is the less likely or less time you have to do technical skills, it seems like, but don't, even when you're starting out, let that stop you, that you are going to be, you know, talking to a computer. Because I, I mean, even sales teams, even everyone I know is on their computer all the time. So that's a big myth. Myth number seven is you need to live in a major tech hub to have a successful tech career. Let me share something really interesting with you. According to a 2023 Hired.com report, remote tech job opportunities have increased by over 145% since 2020. And now, obviously there was a huge surge of increase during the pandemic and it scaled back a bit, but it's still very interesting because people working remotely in smaller cities often keep their big city salaries while enjoying a lower cost of living. And you have to be mindful of that some companies will say they base salaries based on where you're living. I think that is complete, I'm trying to find not a swear word. I think it's complete crap to be honest with you because I mean, whether you live in a small city or big city, you're still doing the same job. I understand cost of living varies, but you can choose where you want to live for the most part. Maybe there's, maybe that's a one-sided viewpoint, but that's my take on it. Anyways, for me, when I was working at, when I left a big tech and I wanted to start in more startup kind of world again, what I did was I only applied to US companies, startup companies that were mid-size, because those mid-size startup companies that were based in the US, they would pay me in US dollar, I'm Canadian, and they also wouldn't base it on as you get bigger with these companies, they often base it on, you know, you live in this country, so you get paid this much, or you live in this city, you get paid this much. I found the mid-sized companies didn't do that, so that's just a tip. If you are looking to get paid fairly, regardless of where you live, look for those mid-sized, smaller tech companies. Okay, those are the top seven tech myths I really wanted to go over with you today because I feel like they keep on coming up in my messages or comments, and I thought, it's time. We need to clear this up, we need to get back to these do not matter, do not listen to this. At the end of the day, you need to be your biggest cheerleader and go after what you want. And in order to do that, you can't listen to the noise. You need to drown it out. 
And that's hopefully what I helped you with today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more future tech, coding, STEM, career, all the good stuff, topics, and leave in the comments what other topics you want me to cover. I'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.